On the posterior side of the scapula, you can observe the glenoid cavity, that socket for the shoulder joint, the acromion, which helps surrounds the head of the scapula in the shoulder joint and binds to the clavicle. The acromion is attached to the spine, and one can palpate this readily. You can feel the acromion of uh, the scapula on the posterior of your back, and then feel that it is continuous with the spine of the scapula. On either side of the spine of the scapula, there is a fossa, which is important for the attachment of muscles, uh, which we study later, the rotator cuff muscles. Above the spine is the supraspinous fossa. This is the origin of the supraspinatus. Below the spine is the infraspinous fossa. This is the origin of the infraspinatus muscle. As we view the scapula laterally, we can observe the components which compose the socket for the shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint where the head of the humerus, or the ball, fits into a socket which is composed of the glenoid cavity, the acromion, and the coracoid process of the scapula. The acromion is the larger of the two processes and is continuous with the spine of the scapula, so this can be easily felt with your fingers. On the anterior surface of the scapula, you can identify the glenoid cavity, the acromion, the coracoid process, and a depression known as the subscapular fossa. This is the origin for the rotator cuff muscle, the subscapularis. Notice that on the posterior side, there are two depressions which have the root spine in, the, in them, supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa. There is no spine on the anterior surface of the scapula, and therefore its fossa is named the subscapular fossa.